Good morning, dear. Like, we're so glad you have joined us for worship this morning. I'm here with Luann and Pastor Bobby and the rest of the team, and we are so excited for what God has in store for you today. Um, we don't know exactly what God is going to do, how God is going to speak, um, but we know he is. And so my hope and prayer for you is that you come with the heart of expectancy, expecting God to show up this morning. Dear Lake, we're excited to be together in worship today. As always, we love you and miss you. We have a great worship service planned this morning. We have our music teams that will be coming and leading us in worship. Sylvia, our children's ministry director, has a great children's message for our kids. We also have Pastor Bobby, who will be sharing a message from Luke chapter 5. And then finally, we're going to celebrate communion together. And want to say that if you have not had time to gather either your Bible or your communion supplies, so go ahead and deposit the video here and grab those things now. But in the meantime, let me share a couple of our announcements with you this morning. The first of which is to let you know that Pastor Bobby has begun his Pastor Porch series. This is an opportunity for our church family to not only get to know Pastor Bobby, but for him to meet many of us as well. We're beginning with our small group as well as our ministry teams, but there'll also be opportunities for those who are not already plugged in to one of those things to sign up online. And our second announcement is to let you know that we continue to have a variety of small group offerings. There are those that meet in person here at church outside, as well as online studies. We also have some self-guided studies that you can participate in and through Right Now Media. But we're excited about today's message and all that God has for us this morning. Amen to all those things. We are so excited. We, I really do hope that you would um, check out the church website and find out how you can get more connected. And we're going to enter into a time of worship. So I just ask that you bow your heads and pray with me now. Father God, we thank you. We praise you, Lord, for the God that you are. That all that you're doing in our lives and in our midst. We come to you now in a time of worship, Father, to, to lift up praise to you, to lift up our voices to you. God, we ask that you would meet us here in this time, in this moment, begin to soften our hearts and prepare us, Lord, for all that you have in store. We thank you and we praise you. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, good morning, church. Thanks for joining us this morning. We're going to kind of keep things low-key this morning and... Uh, we're going to sing to our God nonetheless. So we hope wherever you are that you have come just expecting to meet him this morning, to give him all the honor and the glory. So let's sing his praises. Come on, let's lift our voice. Because I count on one thing, the same God that never fails. When I fail me now, you won't fail me.
we just want to know you more. We want to be near you. We want to be around you. We want to be in your presence, Lord, in the presence of Jesus Christ, that we surrender all, Lord. We surrender our lives to you. We surrender our grace and our honor, Lord, to the name of Jesus Christ. continue in our worship through our time of offering. 
We want to say thank you to all of you for your generosity and for your giving, not only of your financial giving, but also through your time, your talents, and your abilities that help to support the church ministries and the things that we are participating, not only within our church family, but also in our community, our nation, and our world. One of the ways your financial generosity has been able to be a blessing to those in our community is through our recent contribution to Catholic Charities. They have a Christmas and July fund that is going to help all of the victims of COVID, those who have been financially affected. It helps them to provide them mortgage, rent payments, as well as utilities and for food costs. So thank you for all that you've done to help make that a reality for so many. So as we continue in our worship and through our offerings, we want to remind you that you can give in a safe manner in a variety of ways. You can give online by following the link that is there on your screen. You can also mail in your, your offering into the church office, or you can just stop by Monday through Friday, 10 until 5. But with that, as we prepare our hearts for worship, let us give God praise and go to him in prayer right now. Dear gracious Father, we come before you today, Lord, and we just give you praise and thanks. We thank you, Lord, for your continued provision, your continued love, your continued, Lord, just your mercy and grace that is poured out on us. Father, we thank you for all the ways that you have blessed us, Lord, and enabled us to be a blessing to others. We thank you that you invite us to be part of what you're doing. And so, Father, today, Lord, we, we offer back to you a portion of what you've given us, recognizing that everything we have, Father, is from you. And, Lord, we pray that as these gifts bless others, Lord, that you would cause it to multiply, Father. And Lord, as we prepare our hearts for worship, Lord, I pray that that you would help us to be fully present with you in this place, Lord. Whether we're worshiping at home in a church building, in our family rooms, with our loved ones, Lord, wherever we are gathered today, Lord, we know that you are here. So we welcome you and we pray that you would prepare our hearts to meet with you. We pray all of these things in Jesus' mighty name, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Hey guys, it's Sylvia Carver, Children's Ministry Director here at Deer Lake United Methodist Church. And the most special gift that God gave us is the ability to have a relationship with Him and to worship Him. And none of God's creations, other than human beings, are able to worship the way that people do. Um, and because God created us in this special and unique way, we really do please God when we worship Him. And so to find out more about how we can worship him um, and our unique gifts, please log on at 11 o'clock and visit our Sunday worship lesson with Miss Barbara. Hope to see you there. What are y'all doing? We're looking at a bumblebee. Oh, a bumblebee. Did you guys know that bumblebees are God's creation? And God created them to pollinate flowers. They have a very special purpose. Did you know that? He also created us for a special purpose and gives us really special gifts and abilities. Do you guys have any special gifts? Yes. You do? What is it? I can run. You can run? That's awesome. Who else? Do you guys have any special gifts? Um, I like singing. You like singing? I like oh, that's coloring. a really great gift. I like singing too. Yes, that is so awesome. And coloring. Well, how does that make you feel to have a special gift? Happy. Oh, Happy. so great, doesn't it? See, See you, you soon. soon. Good morning, church family. Our scripture, our scripture reading today comes from Luke chapter um, 5, verses from 1 through 11. 
will be reading from the English Standard Version. It reads, On one occasion, while the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, and he saw two boats by the lake. But the fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. Getting into one of the boats, which was Simon's, he asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people from the boat. And when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. And Simon answered, Master, we toiled all night and took nothing. But at your word, I will let down the nets. And when they had done this, they enclosed a large number of fish, and their nets were breaking. They signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of the fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching men. And when they had brought their boats to land, they left everything and followed him. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, Thank you for your word. Help us to see and hear and feel you through it today. Would you would you use this time to help us grow in our faith and become the kind of people who trust you more and more in each area of our lives? Would you give all glory and honor and praise and pray all this in the powerful name of Jesus? Amen. Hey, Deer Lake, it is so good to see you all. Kind of. You can see me. I can't necessarily see you. But we're going to make this work. Amen? All right. Well, second week here. Still here. So things are going fairly well. It has been such a joy to be here. I've gotten to meet many of you. And I can't wait to meet uh, more of you. And so if you haven't already done that, I want to encourage you to come be a part of one of the uh, Pastor Porch series. I'd love to, to see you and meet you there and answer any questions that you might have. Uh, but this has just been such a joy for me. And I can't wait uh, to unpack the scriptures that were just uh, so beautifully read. So thank you for that. Uh, but before we do, I, I just want to kind of let you in on uh, maybe one of the most exciting moments I've ever had in my entire life. It lasted about five to ten seconds. It was very, very quick, but long story short, I had led a group of students on a trip to England. It wasn't really a mission trip. Uh, we were there to, to learn from the church in England. I don't know if you're aware of this, but uh, Hardly anybody uh, kind of identifies as a Christian in England. Uh, the, the church has just um, declined drastically over the years there. And so the churches that are remaining, the Christians that are remaining, are doing incredible creative work. And so we took a team of students and some of our adults to learn from them and just kind of see what they're doing. So it's the night of like the, the, the fun night. So if you've ever been on like a short-term mission trip, you do a lot of work and then you have a one day where it's kind of like the fun day. This was our fun day. We went into the, the heart of London. Uh, we actually went to uh, see the Lion King live. It was incredible. Uh, and afterwards, we were leaving the theater and, and we're going through these alleys and we get to this kind of like open courtyard. And as soon as we opened, as soon as we walked out into the courtyard, people were just filling and flooding that place like crazy. It was, it was every youth pastor's nightmare. Like, I'm, I'm sure if I talked to Nick, Nick would know exactly what I'm talking about. Parents have trusted you to take their kids to a different country, and all of a sudden, I'm in a place that I'm not familiar with, and just hundreds and hundreds and thousands of people are pouring in, and we have no idea what's going on. And so we, we devised a very quick plan. We're now walking single file, uh, I'm in the back of the line. My job is to make sure no kid kind of wanders off and gets distracted. And so that's my job is just to make sure I don't lose anybody. And so we're walking through this crowd of people that's getting tighter and tighter and tighter. The energy level is through the roof. It's palpable. Like you can tell everybody here knows something is going on, but we have no idea what's happening. And then I see these, I'm going to call them men, 
but they were more like mountains of muscle. I mean, just the, the largest human beings I've ever seen. And they start cutting through the crowd. And they're, they're not being mean. They're not being vicious. But they are very forcefully kind of making a path. We're approaching where they're at. I mean, one of these guys is just a few feet from me. And I look back over my shoulder as we're walking by. They've made a path. And then I see what all the commotion is about. The entire cast of Harry Potter was within a few feet of us. What we had no idea was happening was that we were at a movie premiere. The the newest Harry Potter movie was premiering that night and the cast was actually there and the the crowds were all the fans of the Harry Potter series there to cheer them on. And so I'm looking over my shoulder because I don't want to lose any of my students. I'm looking over my shoulder and there they go, the cast of Harry Potter. If if I wanted to risk losing my arm from one of these uh, mountainous men, I could have reached out and touched them. They were that close. Sometimes, sometimes we are very, very close to incredible things and we don't even realize it. Sometimes we are so incredibly close to something good and beautiful and wondrous and awesome and we don't even realize it. And in our scripture today, Peter is close to something that is far better than the cast of Harry Potter. The scriptures tell us uh, that on one occasion, uh, Jesus is present and the crowds are pressing and the crowds are growing. They are all closing and they want to hear him. They want to see him. They want to touch him. But there's at least one person who could care less. And it's Peter. Listen to what it says. On one occasion, while the crowd, this is Luke 5 verse 1, on one occasion, while the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, and he saw two boats by the lake, but the fishermen, one of them Peter, had gone out of them and were what? They were washing their nets. So check this out. Jesus is there. He's close at hand. He's present. Everybody wants to be near him. Everyone wants to see him. Everyone wants to get close enough to touch him. But there's at least one guy who is more preoccupied with washing his nets than seeing Jesus. Now, maybe we can be a little gentler with Peter. Maybe he was multitasking. Maybe he was washing his nets and listening to Jesus. Now, I'm sure none of you are multitasking right now. I'm sure no one's at home doing the dishes or doing folding a lot. None of y'all are multitasking, so I know this doesn't apply to you, but sometimes we multitask when there are things that we really should be focusing in on and not missing out on, and this is one of those moments for Peter, but thankfully, that's all about to change. Peter's focus is about to drastically change And the reason why, the reason why his focus, his attention is going to change is actually something almost too simple, like overly simple. The reason Peter's focus is about to change is because Jesus is about to get in his boat. Or let me put it another way. Jesus is about to get into his personal space. There is something powerful that happens. There's something powerful that happens when we invite Jesus into our space. Peter was distracted. Maybe at best he was multitasking, but he was not giving Jesus the attention Jesus deserved. Jesus is there. He doesn't want to miss this moment, but the moment Jesus gets in his boat. He's unable to multitask. He's unable to give his attention away the way he was before. There's something about inviting Jesus into our personal space, into our boats, into our homes, around our kitchen tables, into our living rooms, into our televisions, our computers, our phones. There's something powerful about welcoming him into those kind of spaces. Often we talk about inviting Jesus into our heart, into our mind. That's good. We need to do that. But sometimes, sometimes before we're ready to invite him into our heart, sometimes it takes inviting him into our spaces to make room in our heart 
for him to enter into there. And, and, and that's not the case for everybody, but that was definitely the case for Peter. Peter would have missed all this except for the fact that Jesus gets into his boat. And the moment Jesus gets into his boat, into his personal space, the moment Peter's personal space becomes Jesus's, things begin to change. Now the thing is, it doesn't happen in an instant. That change, that transformation doesn't just happen like that. In fact, before, check this out, before Jesus is really good news to Peter, he's good news through Peter. Before Jesus is actually good news to Peter, he's good news through Peter. He's good news through Peter's boat at the very least. If you remember, the crowds, man, they are caving in on Jesus. They are doing everything they can to get as close to him. They want to touch him. They want to see him. They want to hear him. They want to get as close as they can. It's just as when you're in a crowd, if you're in the very, very front, you can touch, you can see, and you can hear. If you're in the middle, you might be able to see, you might be able to hear, definitely can't touch. If you're in the back, you probably can't see touch, or hear. Can't do any of that. And so what does Jesus do? Jesus gets in Peter's boat, and then in getting in Peter's boat into his personal space, they set out into the shallow water, and then the water and the shoreline and the distance actually functions as a makeshift amphitheater so that everybody, front and back alike, could actually see Jesus and hear Jesus. Can I stretch this just a little bit farther? For some of y'all, be like, nah, you stretched it too far, Bobby, but you can tell me about that afterwards. I'm going to stretch this just a little bit farther. I want you to think about this. If you're in the front, you can touch. If you're in the front, you can hear. If you're in the front, you can see. If you're in the middle, you can do some. If you're in the back, you can't do anything. Now, where Jesus is, when he's, in the, he's on the water, when he's on the boat, uh, when he's using this as his amphitheater, think about it. Everybody in the crowd can hear and see Jesus in real time, but there are some limits. Now nobody can touch him. Now nobody can interact with him in the same way. In some ways, what we have here when Jesus is in Peter's boat and he's out on the water in the shallow and no one can touch, but everyone can see and hear in real time, what we have here is like first century internet. What we have here is like ancient world social media. Everybody can see and everyone can see and hear in real time at the same time, but nobody can touch and interact and engage in the same way they could when Jesus was on the shore. There's some limits, but there's also some beauty involved. And so before Jesus is ever really good news to Peter, he's good news through Peter, the crowds, who if you were up front could hear and touch and see, but if you're in the back, you couldn't. Now everybody can hear and see at the same time in real time before Jesus was good news to Peter. He was good news through Peter. But Jesus is not content to leave Peter there. I I love this. I mean, think about it. The text says this. It says that uh, Jesus asked him, this is verse 3, halfway through, Jesus asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and he taught the people from the boat. And when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon Peter, put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. When Jesus was done caring for and teaching for the crowd, It was time for Jesus to start caring for and teaching Peter. Because Peter had invited, had welcomed, had allowed Jesus to enter into his own personal space, not yet his heart, but his boat, because that space had now become Jesus' space, when everything else ended, Jesus was able to do new ministry, unique ministry, to Peter and Peter Alone, When everything else ended is when things were really just beginning for Peter. Sometimes, when we invite Jesus into our personal space, not just our hearts and not just our minds, but we invite him into our homes and around our kitchen tables, when we invite him into our computers and our phones, when we invite him into our stuff, our possessions, our property, our spaces and our places, sometimes the real ministry happens when everything else seems 
ended. Many, many years ago, I was doing youth ministry, and we had a very clearly articulated end time for our events that nobody cared about. And we were okay with it. Like, we knew we ended at 8 o'clock or 8.30 or whatever time it was. And we knew that we would be asking the last student to leave about 45 minutes to an hour later. We just, we just were, we were prepared for it. We knew it. We, we kind of loved it. To be perfectly honest, we had all these teenagers who actually wanted to spend time with us and do life with us. And yes, we were not going to chase them away. On one night, we had a student. It was about 45 minutes after our event. Everybody else was gone. And he wasn't the kind of kid who would normally stay late. And so I went up to him, pulled him aside, and said, hey, dude, you gotta, <laughs> I, got, I love you, but I love my family, and I, I need to get home to them. And he's like, oh, no, I, I, I'll, call, I'll call my mom. And so we're, we're in the lobby, and, and he, he turns around. He turns around. I won't turn around because I want you to still be able to hear me. He turns around, and he kind of hunches over and takes his phone out. And I can hear him, and I can hear the phone ringing. And he says, hey, hey, mom, 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 where are you at? Her response is something I will never forget. He doesn't know I can hear. In fact, we had a couple of our team members in there who could hear. And what I heard, I will not fully repeat to you, but I will say I heard this. I heard his mom speak up and say, I will get there when I colorful language, get there, and hung up the phone. This young man has, has his back to us, and I can see him looking at his phone sort of in disbelief, and he puts it away, and he turns around, and he has no idea that we overheard. He has no idea that we just heard all that. And so he, he, he puts on a good, strong face, and, oh, hey, hey, guys, my, my mom's on her way. You know, my mom's, my mom's on, on the way. She'll, she'll be here in a second. We're like, oh, you know, that's cool, that's cool, because we're not going to let on that we heard that. Now, what I wanted to do, what I wanted to do is when that mom showed up, I wanted to ask her son to wait in the lobby, and I wanted to go give her a piece of my mind, but that would not have gone well on social media. I can already see the, I can already see the posts. I can already, you know, uh, youth pastor chews out mom for chewing out son. I, I, that, uh, that, that wasn't going to be good. And to be quite frank, that young man had already heard and seen enough of that. He needed to hear and see something different. So in that moment, we decided we were going to make the next 5, 10, 15, 20, 45, however long we had with this kid, we were going to make it the best time of his life. So we went and got all the leftover food. We went and opened up the candy. We opened up the sodas. We had a party up in there, opened the freezer. We got ice cream. We had the most fun we could possibly have. And in that moment, I learned a very important lesson that very often the most important ministry we do happens when the official ministry is over. Sometimes the most important things that we're a part of happen when everything else is done. The crowds are going, the teaching is done, but that's when it started to get real and personal for Peter. When you invite God into your space, into your home, into your heart, into your, at your kitchen table, your living room, when you invite God into those spaces, very often it's not the immediate mom- moment where you experience the power and presence of God. Many times it's, it's after the fact. It's when everything seems over that God shows up in profound ways, but it's inviting God into that space that creates a structure and the opportunity for God to do what only God can do. God was able to teach the crowd. Jesus was able to teach the crowds. But that personal touch was reserved for the one who invited him into his boat. And so it's at this moment where Jesus looks at Peter He's finished teaching and says, hey, let's, let's go out into the deep water and let's fish a little more. Can, can you imagine being Peter? Remember, you fished all night and you caught nothing. You fished all night. Forget whether you caught something or not. you tired. Man, if I fished all night, I'm tired. I want to go home. Can you imagine Peter seeing Jesus finish up his sermon? He's done the benediction, said a prayer, said amen. Peter's pulling up the anchor. He's ready to go home. He's thinking about his bed. He can't wait. And then he sees Jesus looking out, not towards the shallow, not towards home, but out over the deep water. And he's like, what's he doing? Why is he looking out there? Wait. You want me to what? 
You, you want me to go out to deep water and fish some more? Listen to Peter's response. Jesus says, put out into the deep and let down your nets. And Simon Peter answered and said, Master, we toiled all night and caught nothing. We caught nothing. Dude, Jesus, I, I, I know you're the rabbi, but I'm the fisherman. This is my area. This is my boat. I, I know how things work. And I know you go fishing at night because that's when the best time to do it. And we did it when things were at their best. And we came up with nothing. We did it. We tried. We put in the effort. We put in the energy. Nothing. I didn't even get a t-shirt out of it. And now you want me, you want me to go back out? Chances are some of y'all are feeling that towards this whole digital church thing. I've been there, done that, I tried. I watched it last week and I watched it the weekend before. I watched it the weekend before. I tried, got nothing. Some of you, it's not digital church. Some of you, it's church in general. Been there, done that, tried. For some of you, it's not digital church or church in general. Some of you, it's, it's Christianity as a whole. It's God, been there, done that, fished all night, tried, got nothing. If that's you, if you're listening to this and you're in any one of those categories, I've tried with digital church. I've tried with the church in general. I've tried with God and this whole Jesus thing. I've tried, I've tried, I've tried, and I haven't gotten anything out of it. If that's you today, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for your persistence. I want to thank you for your effort. I want to thank you for your energy. And I have no right to ask this of you, but I'm going to ask you for one favor. And that favor is this. Please keep trying. Please keep trying, because if Peter's response ends there, he misses the miracle. If Peter's response ends there, Master, we fished, we toiled, we worked all night, and we caught nothing. If that's where his response ends, he misses out on everything that comes after it. But listen to Peter's response. Master, we toiled all night, we worked all night, we fished all night, and we caught nothing. But at your word, but at your word, I will let down my Nets. At your word. Not my experience, because if it's at my experience, my experience says we fished all night and caught nothing. Not my experience, not my preference. My preference is that I'd like to go home and go to sleep and have breakfast. Not by my rationale, my logic, my understanding, not according to my tradition. Not my experience, not my understanding, not according to my traditions or my preferences, but at your word, I will let down my nets. And don't you love this? Peter never says, he never says how many times he's willing to do it. No, he doesn't say, at your word, I'll let it down. One more time, that's all you got. All you got. Two more, to two more times, that's it. I will let him down here and over here, and if nothing happens, I'm out of here. Doesn't, doesn't say anything like that. At your word, at your word, Jesus, I will let down my nets. You see, there is a difference between expectation and expectancy. Expectation says, if this doesn't happen this way, then it's been a waste of time. If this doesn't happen this, this way, then it's been a waste of resources. If this doesn't happen this way, I'm out. Expectation puts limits and boundaries on what must happen. Expectancy is the language of faith. Expectancy says, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what it's going to look like. But Lord, I, I'll let down my nets again. And you know what? I, I'll do it again and again and again and again. I'll do it one more time. And I'll do it one more time after that. And I'll do, you know what? I'll do it one more time after that. And one more time, one more time, one more time. Expectancy says, Lord, I don't know what you're up to, but I'm choosing to believe that you are up to. To something. Peter didn't need to have enough faith to believe. He didn't have, need to have enough faith to believe that he was going to catch something. He just needed to have enough faith 
to let down his nets. You, my friend, me, us, we, we are not responsible for the outcome. We are only responsible for our obedience. And when we step out in faith and, and let down the net, so to speak, the rest is up to Jesus. But that's an incredible act of faith to try one more time, one more time, one more time, again and again and again. And dear Lake, I, I want to just encourage you because I have been so encouraged and hopeful by the posture of expectancy that I found here. That posture of expectancy that says, I don't know what's going on. And I don't know where this is going to lead. But I know that my God is good. And I'm going to follow him to any and every end. And so my hope and my prayer is that we can continue to grow in that expectancy. And where we have settled for expectation, that together as a community, that we can learn to grow and move from expectation to expectancy. Because this incredible thing happens when you have just enough faith to let down your nets. When you have just enough faith to try again. What we see here in the text is God honors that. It doesn't always look like this. But what we see again and again in the scriptures is that when we step out in faith with that posture of expectancy, God shows up. And so I want to encourage you, I want to encourage you, open up your hearts, yes. Open up your minds, yes, to his love and grace and goodness. Open up your life to him. But I also want you to open up your phone. I want, to, I want you to open up your computer. I want you to open up all those other parts of your life, all that stuff. I want, to op I want you to open up all the boats in your life. I want that computer that you use for business I want that, for, for God to be able to use that, to open your heart and mind to the business of God. That, that TV that you use for entertainment, I, I, I want you to op open yourself up to, to God using that to get your attention and to captivate your heart in a way your favorite TV show never could. Those phones, these phones that we have, these incredible gifts that allow us to connect with people all over the world, that's a beautiful gift Let's open them up to what God might want to do in them and through them. I have no idea. Just like Nick said at the beginning, we have no idea what God is up to, but he's just up to something. And I'm grateful to be here and be a part of that. And how fitting it is today to remember that truth, to celebrate, celebrate that truth by sharing in communion together. And so we're going to, if you haven't already done this, I'm going to invite you to go ahead and pause. That's the beauty of recording, right? We, we can just pause this right here. So if you haven't already done this yet, go ahead and pause and get your bread and get your juice or get something like it so we can celebrate this meal uh, together that God has given us. We might be scattered about, but it's the same Jesus with you wherever you are who's right here. And so I invite you to share in this meal with us. From the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and he blessed it. He broke it and he gave it to those gathered there that night and said, take, eat. This is my body broken and given for you. Whenever you eat this, remember me. Afterwards, he took the cup and he gave thanks to God and gave it to those gathered there that night and said, take and drink you all of this. This is my blood shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink this, remember me. And so as we eat and drink, we do so in remembrance and celebration of the God who has made a way for us. We eat and drink this bread and juice and our hope and our prayer is that this bread and juice would be for us the body and blood of Christ so that we might be for the world the hands and feet of Jesus, redeemed by grace, sent out in love and empowered by the Holy Spirit of God. Amen and amen. 
Thank you for joining us this morning. We have one more song immediately after this. You can go ahead and take and then celebrate communion now. We've got one more song that we're going to be transitioning to. And then we've got a quick final word that I want to encourage you to stick around for. Uh, but let's celebrate and give thanks to our God together this morning. Amen. Will your grace run out if I let you down? Cause all Thank you for worshiping with us this morning. Wasn't Pastor Bobby's message awesome? Definitely. One of the things that uh, he said that really challenged us was that sometimes God has to work through us before he can work in us. And so what I want you to do right now, what I want to encourage you to do is get your phones out. 
Think about a friend, think about a family member, someone that you know that needs to hear this message and send them the link, send them the message so they can partake in what God is doing here at Deer Lake UMC. And one of the other things I want you to do is I want you to click the subscribe button so that anytime we have a video posted to our YouTube channel, you'll receive a message um, with the video. So don't forget, if you have any questions about any of our activities or events that are happening here at the church, or if you would like to give financially to the ministries of the church, check out our website. We look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great week.